welcome to Boomer and Senior Travel. I'm your host, Debbie Gerber. Today we're in Cape Town, South Africa. I loved South Africa, and I especially loved Cape Town. One of the things I found really unusual was the amount of ostriches that were on farms as we passed. I wondered about them, and as I looked up and found out about ostriches, ostriches are native to Africa. They are becoming extinct out in the natural wilderness, but they are there are a lot of them on farms. They use them for ostrich feathers that they sell, for like dusters and things like that, but they also race them. Racing ostriches is a big thing in Africa. They ride them just like you would a horse. I saw this done at the Date Festival in California. Really an interesting experience to watch people mount on the on these birds on these little saddles. They look like little jockeys and they ride them. They are harder to control than a horse by far, but it is just hilarious. They bounce around and they race each other. They also do it with little carts and they will race them. That is one of uh, kind of a side sport down there. Ostriches. Ostriches, the big myth is the ostriches hide their head in sand. This is not true. What is believed that this came from is when ostriches feel threatened, they will lay down and they'll put their head and their neck flat to the ground. They'll lay as flat to the ground as they can. And if you were to look out, uh, if you were a lion or a leopard or one of their uh, predators, you would look at them and say, with the heat of the day, that it looks like a mound of dirt rather than an animal. And so a lot of times they can hide this way. The other way, if they get threatened by a predator, is to run. They are very fast. They've been known to go up to about 43 miles an hour. They are the fastest animal if you consider it in over a long distance. They can do a continuous space of just about 30 miles an hour over a long distance. Now these are the largest birds, still one of the two largest birds still living. They have uh, the largest eggs of any living bird now. They are raised on farms for meat. They, they do sell ostrich meat as well as they make a leather out of its skin. So it is also commercially grown. I looked at their feet at one point and I thought, ooh, cut off toe, but it's not. These birds have two toes. One of them, only one of them, has a nail on it. The other one doesn't, so it almost appears like it got cut off. So a two-toed bird with a nail on one of them. They have great eyesight and a really good hearing. So they can hear their predators coming from a long distance. These birds weigh a lot, most of them over 200 pounds. But I can't imagine how they get that much when they only eat. They eat mostly plants and once in a while some insects. So they're not eating anything that would like make you fat but uh, they are a big bird. They are only one of two birds, uh, living species of birds, that do not fly. Ostriches cannot fly. They have these huge wingspans, up to like six feet, but they don't fly. I thought another thing that was really interesting is the babies, after they hatch, they will grow at about 10 inches during the winter months, you'll see them traveling either alone or as a couple. During other times of the year, they will travel anywhere from, or if it's like a drought time, they'll travel any, in groups of five to up to even 50 of them together. You don't want to get near an ostrich. Uh, they can be extremely dangerous. If they feel threatened, they will attack. They can kick forward with their feet. They are powerful. They, um, I mean, that's even how they'd fight off a lion if it got too close. So imagine if it got kicking you. Uh, they are ferocious when they do attack. 
Uh, they also have a beak and they can bite and they will bite if you get close. So stay your distance and just enjoy from a distance uh, longer than their neck or their feet. We did see a lot of baboons. Baboons are they're kind of ugly, but they travel in what are called troops. They carry their babies along with them when they move along. They forage for food. They eat mostly herbs or uh, plants, uh, but they will also eat even small fish or up to even small antelope if they need to. Mostly what they do around here, as we went into uh, the Cape of Good Hope, one of the things we noticed was a ton of these, well, not a ton, a lot of the baboons, and they would cross the roads, and if uh, there was a big warning of don't feed them, they like to get things from tourists, and they are a problem in South Africa for people. They'll even raid their homes to get food because it's an easy thing to do. One of our stops, I know they were a problem because they would try to attack people for food. So they can be a problem because they are smart. They learn really fast that tourists have food on them and they're a source of food and they'll go after that food. As we watched, they were even scrounging around the sides of the roads and getting into chip bags, anything they could looking for food. They stopped the bus by sitting right in the middle of the street where someone had thrown out some food and they were eating it. And so it was fun for us because we got to stop and watch them. It was really cute. One of them had their little baby with them. Babies are, uh, females usually only have one baby at a time. Uh, they're very small. And look how it clings to its mother. She walks along. So it's just riding along. No pouch. It has to hang on for it, for itself to stay on with her. But here the mother is carrying the baby with them as they travel down the road. <coughs> Baboons can be very aggressive. The males uh, guard their females very um, heavily. They are mean. They will guard them and they will have a harem. Basically they have a whole group of females. Uh, they also, uh, one of the interesting things is they sit a lot and so they have this hard patch of skin on either side of their butt cheeks, um, I say that, that they can sit down on. So you'll see these hard, uh, hard areas of skin there for them to sit on. They also, uh, it's a sign of affection, but also they take care of each other. They will um, pick out all the little bugs or little lice or anything they've got on them and they pick those off each other. You'll see them grooming each other a lot. One of the two markers that are here that are easily seen from a ship, one of them was put there by the Portuguese as a marker. Uh, it is called the, the Vasco de Gama or the cross, uh, and it was one of the points of references for the ships. The other one now is, of course, the lighthouse. The Cape of Good Hope, this point, is often uh, thought of as the further southern point of South Africa, where the Atlantic Ocean meets the Indian Ocean and turns back on itself. Now, you could it almost looked like it from where we were, but actually about uh, 12 kilometers uh, further south from there, there is a point that actually is a little bit further south. So it's not really a true statement that the Cape of Good Hope is the furthest south point of South Africa, but it's a nice story for the tourists when they go there. Uh, it was really quite a climb. Now you can take a transport, a little, um, looks like a big golf court cart. Uh, you can take that up about part way to where there is like a little museum and you can read about the Cape of Good Hope there. But if you're going to go all the way to the top, you have to climb and it is quite a little climb. So get ready. I made it. You probably can too. But be aware that if you have trouble walking, that could really be quite uh, an exertion for you. When we got to the top, they had this 
uh, pull there, and on it were all these directions. Do you want to go here? Let's go to Paris. Let's go to Berlin. Let's go to, you know, it has all these different cities uh, with the arrow pointed to the direction. The ships would come around the bottom of this uh, cape, uh, Cape Hope. At one point, uh, there was a Portuguese captain who called it the storms, Cape of Storms because when he came through there it was very stormy and as he came around the point then they came out of those storms. Later it was called the uh, Cape of Good Hope because when the Dutch came they as they came around that point that's as they come as the ship comes south that's where it then would turn and then be able to go more eastwardly again and they made a settlement on that other side and they built kind of a castle a fort to uh, protect its uh, supplies, and that was a supply point for the Dutch ships. And then it was called the Cape of Good Hope. One of the legends of the Cape of Good Hope is that this was the place, this was the home of the Flying Dutchman. That is the ship with all the tortured sailors, the tortured sailors who were damned to live as ghosts forever on that ship. I think I saw that in the movie, The Pirates of the Caribbean. On the trail, we stopped a couple of times to relax. There were some really pretty flowers. There's some uh, really nice, you know, just things to look at if you're into plants or birds or I love lizards. I love iguanas and lizards. And here we found a really spiky, almost looked like he had armor type of a lizard. And I'm fascinated by lizard. I used to have two iguanas as pets that we had for 10 and 13 years. So I always look for the lizards, and I usually find them. As you get to the top and look down, it's really interesting. It looks almost like the Great Wall of China, but what it really is is the walls of the fort where they used to protect their area that they had built to uh, have their supplies and to be able to watch for other ships. We even saw what looked to be a little really fat groundhog. I don't know what kind of animal it was, but something that came out of the ground and was scurrying around. And of course, you can't leave without having the touristy type pictures. Our tour guide was great, even with a whole group worth of pictures to take. Cameras hanging all over him. He was worth a picture. As we spent some time in that area, we were able to go down and walk along the shore. I always loved the ocean. I loved to hear it as it, the water will hit the rocks and it sprays, you know, this beautiful white spray up into the air of water. And looking at the rocks and the just the beauty of the ocean, then turning around and looking back up the hill and seeing the towers and the uh, lighthouse and also some antelope here and there. On the beach, we ran into something that I didn't expect, but here were some of the wild ostriches. They were walking along the beach and having a little lunch while they were walking along, giving us a nice opportunity to take some pictures of wild ostriches. Mm -hmm.